shall be first and the first shall be last. Uh-huh. They have studied for years to learn where the cradle of civilization began. And no matter where they dig, hunt, search, it always ends up in the motherland. Civilization goes back millenniums. Timbuktu in the land of Cush, the eldest son of Noah, the savior of the world after the flood. Mizraim, one of the greatest kingdoms in history. You might know it as Egypt. The cross toter that I call him. The man who lugged the tree down the road with Jesus' blood spilling on him was Simon of Cyrene. All you got to do is get a globe or a map and look where Cyrene is. It's in northern Africa. I can go on and on. When the children of Israel were, were, were the, the deliverer, the man that was born to save the children of Israel from slavery, as a baby was put in an ark and put on the river Nile where alligators and snakes and everything dwelled, but he floated down that ark. grew up in Pharaoh's house, murdered a man, and had to spend 40 years on the backside of the desert, mentored, I want you to catch this, mentored by his father-in-law, Jethro, an Ethiopian man. Well, how do we know that? Because the Bible in Numbers chapter 12 says that Aaron and Miriam decided to rebel against Moses and throw out their, well, you think God only talked to you because they were frustrated with him because of the Ethiopian wife who he had married. Because he had married an Ethiopian woman. So if you marry an Ethiopian woman, her daddy must be. And where's Ethiopia? So who mentored the deliverer, the lawgiver? When you understand who you are, I wouldn't miss a Sunday next, next month because we're going to deal with the truth of who we are and try to put some things in order. We are not the way we're portrayed on TV. We are not, the, the, we're not the, what's portrayed in the rap videos. Don't get mad at me, young people, but rap, the whole lifestyle is from the pit of hell, and it is meant to destroy you in your mind. It glorifies negative behaviors that bring death and destruction to those that pursue it. And when you listen to it because it's cool, you think it's cool, you are putting in your brain so much negative energy that you, will, you can easily get caught up in some mess. Don't listen to it because you think it's cool. I don't mind a little rhythm and blues, a little popular music, but you need to get that gangster rap out of your brain. Get it off your phone. Get it off your YouTube. Just play a little softer. Turn the volume down just a little bit. Hallelujah. 
I told you I feel like preaching this morning. So I might, I might, I might step on somebody's toes. So if I do, y'all re- point your hand up and say, we forgive you, Bishop. We ain't going to take it personal. Even if you're in my mail, I ain't read nobody's mail. I don't know what y'all done did. I'm just going to tell you what God told me. <clears throat> this morning, I'm going to be dealing with faithful. Now you can switch it back to faithful. Everybody's welcome. They know they're welcome in dominion. Anybody that still has any semblance of a doubt, like, because Bishop keeps saying, don't be afraid of change. Ain't nothing changed yet. Change coming. It's on the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We done got some preliminary, um, I wish we had to put it up on the screen. The preliminary, um, huh? No, it won't hook, it won't. It'll hook up the, it won't hook up the, the video feed, it'll hook up the, but we'll next time, next Sunday, we'll put it on so we can show them the, what this sanctuary is going to turn into when they turn into the full-fledged <clears throat> Dominion Kids Early Learning Center Corporation. Hallelujah. But this morning, I'm going to be dealing with faithful. It's actually two words, faithful. There's a word that is in the Bible hundreds of times called faithful. It's faith, F-U-L. And many times when I'm getting ready for a message, and I know many, many preachers study the Greek and the Hebrew, and I do, I, I have, and I do refer sometimes to the Greek and Hebrew to make sure I understand the root of what the scriptures are trying to say according to the original language. But sometimes I also have found it is good to go to the dictionary to get an understanding of what the word means in the language that we are accustomed to using. We speak, if you don't speak English, raise your hand. Anybody in this that don't speak English. I ain't mean good English, you just speak English. Okay. Nobody raised their hand, so that means we had a full audience of English speakers. So I went to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and I pulled up the full definition of faithful, the word F-A-I-T-H-F-U-L. And the number one thing that jumped out at me and caught my attention was this. See, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness of this world that influences the way the world thinks and acts. The very first definition. In fact, while I'm doing this, Brother Derek, go to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and put in the word faithful. Because it shocked me when I saw this that the number one definition in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary for faithful has been classified obsolete. And what the obsolete classification is, full of faith. Let me know when you find it so they can see it. So they, The full definition of faithful and it's number one, you would normally, any obsolete reference to something is 
at the end of all the other definitions, the other, and at the end it'll say an, an antiquated or obsolete reference to this word is blank. But in this case, the very number one thing says obsolete, full of faith. So in the eyes of the world, <clears throat> it is obsolete or no longer necessary to be full of faith. That's what I said. Mm. Imagine that. There you go. Okay, it's kind of light. That's about as dark as we can get it, huh? Hit control plus plus and get it bigger. Control plus plus again. And then bring it down. Bring it down so I can see that number one. See there? Right there. Stop. Hit control plus one more time to see if we can get it just a little bit clearer. Can y'all see it? Number one. Obsolete. Obsolete. When I saw that, can you see it now? Imagine that. Maybe one more hit control plus one more time. Obsolete. Full of faith. Now who declared that? Who put that in the Webster? Merriam Webster Dictionary. How did full of faith become obsolete? The just, you can put the light back on. You can put it back to the other one. We're going to, we're going to, I wanted you to see it so that as I, you could see as I was doing my study, that bothered me. The just shall live by faith. By faith. The worlds were formed. We need faith. Jesus asked a question. He said, when I return, will I find faith? So I got to look at it. I said, okay, let me break it down into the parts. So I put in the word full. Full says completely filled, containing all that can be held, filled to utmost capacity. That's what full means. Complete, entire, maximum. That's what full means. Of the maximum size, amount, extent, volume, etc., abundant and well supplied. The word full is similar to the word all. There's only one connotation for full, it means it is full. When this jug gets full, that means no more can get in it. When something is full and you put more in it, what happens? It overflows. So full simply has one connotation. 
it is completely filled. Then I looked up the word faith again in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. I wanted to look at how just the words themselves are interpreted from a non-scriptural standpoint, just to understand the word faith. And it came out to say confidence or trust in a person or thing. Belief that is not based on proof. Belief that is not based on proof. We exercise faith all day, every day. Well, you don't think you do? You have faith that when you take a step, the ground in front of you or the floor in front of you is strong enough to accept your weight. I haven't seen none of y'all doing this. That's <laughs> because you walk by faith and not by I didn't notice anybody before they sat down today. <laughs> I see everybody. Faith. You exercise it all day, every day. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to be honest, praying people. When you get in your car and turn the key, do you stop and say, Father, in the name of Jesus? Why? Because you have, and when it don't start, it kind of mess you up a little bit. It happened to us, you know, the day of snow, we got the car all shoveled out. Gang, 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 gang. Gang, 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 gang. <coughs> we had to go buy a battery. Battery was there. We took it to two different places to make sure that they weren't just going to put the thing on there and sell us a battery. Oh, yeah, you need a battery. Yeah, I'm sure we do. But we operated in faith. The third definition, according to the world people that wrote this dictionary, is belief in God or in the doctrines or teachings of religion. So, they got it in there. They dropped it to third, but belief in God is, is faith. Now, fourth thing is belief in anything as a code of ethics, standards of merit, etc. So belief in anything that you really, truly believe in. Like, there are people that believe in, you know, the Masons. They believe in, that, that you know, whatever. I, I don't understand it. A system of religious belief. One of the things that's understood is Jesus Christ never came to establish a religion. He came to establish a system of belief that the just will live by faith and the just will walk by faith and not by sight. It's a system not a religion. Religion in its purest and simplest form is man's way to keep his fellow man in bondage. Man gets, loves to get involved with religion. The system of faith that Jesus brought to us is a system of freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You shall know the and the truth make you free. 
So we don't have to pray. You ain't going to hell if you don't pray five times a day. Every day. If you want to pray five times a day, pray five times. If you want to pray ten times a day, actually, if you really understood where we're supposed to be, we are to pray without ceasing. And Jesus said, man ought always to pray and not to faint. It's a lifestyle of faith. A system of religious belief. And the observance of this obligation, fidelity to one's promise, oath, or allegiance. I have faith that my wife is faithful to me and I'm faithful to her. That's where it comes from, that we're faithful to each other. A faithful wife, a faithful husband. So now we're going to deal with <clears throat> belief that is not based on truth. Let's deal with faith first. So now faith, turn to the book of Hebrews. You all right? You can go sit over there. But we're going to get you another seat. I'm going to take you down there and pick it out. You need a good piano seat. Lynchburg music. Amen. Hebrews 11. Verses 1 through 3. I want to establish the scripture definition of faith. It's a belief that is not based on proof. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now word, one more reminder, get some scripture in you that it comes now. I promise you, when you have it in you, you will have an opportunity to use it. Oh, nothing like having that in your life. The cross where Jesus shed his blood. The shield of faith which is able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When stuff come at you, when you've got a word in you, you now have defense capabilities, faith, and offensive capabilities, the sword. Situation show up in your life, you can cut it up. Them bills come piling in. You can step back and look at them bills and say, Huh, God gave me the power to get wealth. He'll rebuke the devourer for my sake. My fruit shall not come before it's time. You begin to speak to that situation with the word of God. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that believe it shall eat the fruit thereof. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, 
so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It's a deep statement. Goes back to the first one. Things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We understand by faith. If we understand the word and we understand faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. The universe came out of God's mouth. The Big Bang was God saying, let there be. Amen. God was there before the Big Bang. God will be there when the universe supposedly sucks itself into a black hole. The universe is so vast and so immense that our finite minds cannot comprehend it. God is so awesome that our finite minds can't even imagine our own finite minds. <laughs> our minds are so beyond our ability to understand our own minds. The, the capacity God put in our head is beyond comprehension. We don't even understand it ourselves. They say that we are tapped into what? 20% of our brain capacity. God is awesome. But we understand that by faith. Man is on, man, scientists to me are in a with the little, the little furry thing that go in the wheel real fast all day. What do you call that thing? A hamster. A hamster. That's what they, they trying to understand the universe. Trying, and every time they see something new, it just blows their mind. There's a planet somewhere, and it looks like it could contain life. Okay. But you'll never get there in the natural because we are limited. We could take a spaceship somewhere and come, we can only go so far because we are limited to this planet. We were created for this planet. I look forward to the days, eternity in the spirit because I believe that in the spirit, we're no longer limited by time and space. Well, the Bible says that we will be like him. And I don't believe that he is, he, he proved when he was on earth that he's not limited to earthly laws. What we understand, they could touch him after his resurrection. They could fill him, they could hug him, they could fellowship with him, but he could walk through the wall. They say he showed up in the middle of the room. Hey, how y'all doing? He was in the middle of the room, in the midst of them. The door was shut. Read, the, read your Bible, book of John. The door was shut. He was in there. In flesh. I believe when we be like him, it's going to blow our natural minds because we will no longer be limited to the earthly capacities that we are limited to. Now, understanding faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence is not thing. We need to understand how faith works. So I want you to turn to the book of John. I'm going to bring these things together. Book of James, I'm sorry. Did I say James? James 2, not John, James. <clears throat> 2, we're going to look at 17 and a couple other verses. James says, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Faith by itself is powerless. 
It's impotent. It is isolated and alone. It says, a man may say that he have faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. This is the mo one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. Thou believest there is one God. That's a good thing. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So just to say I believe in God does not prove anything faith-wise. Because the devils believe in God and tremble. Did you, could you imagine that? Faith without works is dead. In other words, there ought to be evidence. Faith by itself is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But when it's in operation, there ought to be evidence. Simple example. I'll go back to the example I gave a, a little while ago. Let's deal with just something natural. Your walking is faith works. By you taking steps without trembling and worrying about, is this next step going to be safe? That's works. So every step you take, you are showing your faith. Am I right? So I'm walking around, and because each step I take, I'm not fearful, I'm not afraid. My faith is being reflected. We have to get to where we have that same kind of faith in every area of our life. You unemployed, you start having faith that when you will step in to your job. <laughs> you, you got some financial problems. You got to start having faith that God's going to work it out for you. Start sowing just a little bit. Start paying tithes out of faith. And God will turn your situation around because you are now showing your faith by your works. Let's turn to Ephesians. It's got a couple more scriptures. Then I'm going to preach a little bit, and then I'm going to take my seat. Amen? Is that all right? Y'all learn anything today? <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3. There's an important component to the faithfulness that we have to have. Look at verse 17, Ephesians chapter 3, 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. We need the anointing, the anointed one to take up residence in our hearts. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints. Say, I'm a saint. What is the breadth, the length, depth, and height? And to know, say, I said, I need to know. The love of Christ, which passes knowledge. we getting back into faith again. Anything that goes beyond your knowledge has to be obtained by faith. Always use this example. You need a car. It don't take faith to get a car because you can use knowledge to get a car. It goes, go sit down in the bank. Tell them what car you want. Tell them how to bring your check stubs. Sign the papers, and you driving out with a car. Now, it may take faith 
to do that, but that's done by knowledge. You see the difference? The love of Christ passes knowledge that you might be filled, when you start to operate past knowledge, it's the fullness of God. What, is it, what does it say? That you and to know the love of Christ with passage knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Fullness of God is completely filled, containing all that can be held, filled to the utmost capacity, the fullness of God. You can have, if you, I want you to understand, are able to comprehend what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness, the completely filled, containing all that can be held, filled to the utmost capacity, complete, entire, maximum, size, amount, extent, volume, abundant, well-supplied fullness of God. My God, if you understood what God is trying to tell you this morning. Most men, Proverbs 20, verse 6, will proclaim to everyone his goodness. But a faithful man who can find a full of faith man. Not the obsolete description, but a faithful man that is so full of the fullness of God that he, that he becomes more than a conqueror. That neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, Nothing shall be able to separate him from the love of Christ because he understands Ephesians chapter 3. Faithful people believe God so much that it shows in their service. Faithful people believe in miracles. Faithful people serve God without need for man's approval. Faithful people can't keep it to themselves. Faithful people pay tithes and give offering without the pastor begging them to. Faithful people love the word and it's they become disappointed if they miss Bible study. Faithful people love the word. Faithful people pray for themselves and others. Faithful people make the church grow. Faithful people are not easily discouraged. Faithful Faithful people excel in praise and worship. I could go on and on. Faithful people make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Faithful people are more than conquerors. Faithful people are not fearful. Faithful people are not afraid. Faithful people are in great health. Faithful people know their God and do exploits. Faithful people understand that they are the light of the world. Faithful people know that they are the salt of the earth. Faithful people are not afraid to tell the truth. Faithful people give God praise if you're a faithful person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
faithful. We'll close with Psalm 31, verse 3. No, verse 23. Y'all get anything out of this? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad because I'm going to get me some. Y'all don't know how you. Well, I say Psalm what? Did I say 31? 23. Love the Lord. All ye his saints. Say, I'm a saint. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. The faithful who shows his faith by his works shall be plentifully rewarded. Give God a hand clap of praise. I will take my seat.